Business Jim too. Wiles mm. stole Gavi. money from, from babies too. Mm. Global Gavi. Fund money. Yes, money that was meant for uh, mm. vaccine. Mm. Money that was meant for medicine. Yes. He stole that. Mm. We kept quiet. Mm. That is all that we are saying. Mm. That we are ending the apathy, the indifference, the keeping quiet. Mm. Why should we keep quiet? So the case Why don't the you speaker, go for the president? The case of the speaker is recent. Mm. This happened just yesterday. Mm. Should we say, oh, no, 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 no. Because some Kutesa also stole, we cannot talk about the, the speaker. Mm. So when we call out on the speaker to resign, she's the mm. face of this. Mm. She's the face of this campaign. But mm. not because we do not understand the, the big dogs that have stolen from Uganda and are still stealing. Mm. We know it. You ask why don't we go for the president? Mm. We've seen the president, even when this campaign is going, uh, cuddling with, with, with the speaker. Mm. So when we go for the speaker, and we're really going for the president. Mm. And I will again reiterate that dealing with a narcissist, he will throw spears at you and he will ex expect you to receive it as if it is candy. What we went through when we were being arrested, when we protested, mm. that was not candy that they threw at us. No, it was not candy. Mm. We are still nursing wounds, mm. but we understand that those were spears. So we're not scared to go for the president. We're not scared to go for Anita Mong. We are not scared to go for Sam Kutesa. We are not scared to go for any individual in this country. Well, we have the gov we have a, we have the three arms of government, but mm. one person controls. You see, a lot of people say, "You guys, the usual letter. You're a lawyer. You take these issues of Anita Mong to court." Recently, we were just appointing someone as a, a, a head of an anti-corruption unit, I think, yes, in your yeah, yeah. who had been convicted of corruption. Not a long time ago. Not mm. a long time ago. Mm. We have seen not on one occasion where the president writes a letter or a statement telling a judge to, to overturn their decision that they made a public statement. You understand? Mm. The, the, the chief justice was the lawyer for the president. Exactly. So it, it the doesn't... The personal lawyer. It doesn't work. We have one person who has a lot of power. And that one person is coming back in 2026. Yes. So, so what next? That's another five years. <laughs> yes. Because if he comes on the ballot with the confusion of the opposition, I can say without reasonable doubt that this gentleman is going to come back and is going to win. Okay, so I have a very unpopular opinion mm -hmm. that I'm just going to voice out Please here. Mm -hmm. But before I say that, for example, I'm not going to tell people, for example, to, you know, Ah, do not vote this particular person, do not do this particular thing, mm. because that sort of makes people think a funny way. I personally do not care which leader comes into power if the people realize where we started from in this conversation, that they have the power. You see the system she was talking about, where you have people, where you have systems that you don't identify with people, mm. you know? Mm. To achieve those kind of systems, people have to realize that they have power to handle whatever leader that comes in accountable, to hold them accountable, to show them that, okay, yes, you're in here, but the power is not there. We are the ones that run this show. Mm. He told the same thing. Mm. Actually, the boss at CPS sat with us and said the conversation was going to be sister, the sister, Brand brother sister sort of conversation. Mm. And he told us that the same way he put it, that mm. these things are going to haunt you when next uh, period mm. you want to become a minister, exactly. people are going to see you naked on the street. And it brings me back to what I said earlier, mm. that us being naked on the street started the conversation that Uganda cannot rub. What are we teaching the young people? Mm. Now, anyone could judge us that we are teaching young people nudity, that we are teaching young people to be naked on the street. But can we have the conversation both ways? Mm. Can we not only attack it from the protesters? Can we mm. also talk about why are they, they were protesting? Uh, yes, I, I remember one you in know? the past one used to say, Bobby Wine Saba and Nava Bendi. And I'm like, okay, yes, I use Okubasa, but Anyari Mukuta. Mm. So, can, can, can we, we exactly. let's mm. look at both sides? Mm. So, yes, we got naked. We are teaching young people to be nude as a form of protest. What are we protesting? And what are the other people we are protesting teaching young people? Mm. Okay. Corruption. Mm. Corrupt officials who will be let free because it is not the first time it is happening. Mm. And that is why I keep calling myself the tired citizen because personally I am tired mm. of the, 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 the cycle, mm. you know, the mm. cycle, the, corrupt, the, the war on corruption has not begun today, mm. but we keep losing it. Mm. We keep losing the war. Mm. So if it takes us being naked on the street, yes. we are going to get naked and okay. we are just beginning.
if people do not realize that they should never sit back, cross their legs and say, oh, finally a good person has come in now, let's let them make all the decisions, then we shall be guaranteed of having those systems. Mm. So Museveni can come and run again. Someone else can even come after Museveni and make us suffer worse than what Museveni has made us suffer. Mm. If people do not realize that it is their duty, it is their responsibility as citizens of this country to keep leaders on their tenterhooks. And that's why we see America may not be the most perfect democracy, but it is a better democracy mm. because the people realize that sort of power that resides within them. Mm. You understand? Mm. The fact that a leader will come into power and they will know that I'm not here to serve myself, I'm here to serve people. That's why they will consult people more. That's why they will be more aware of the priorities of the people that they serve because they know they want to come back into power. Yeah. But for as long as Ugandans remain the kind of Ugandans where someone comes during campaigns, gives you a matchbox, a shirt, 1K, a plastic cup and a plastic benson and you're so all excited and you vote them into power, you don't even think twice about whom you're voting into power. Okay, let's say the mistake has happened. People have voted someone bad into power. The person is there. Anita is a speaker. And then she's doing all she's doing and you're sitting down and waiting again for the next election to out her and you don't say anything about what she's doing. That's where the problem is. Is. Mm. So before we, f we ask us, oh, President Museveni is coming back, first of all, people say, let's go to the bush, but I want to say something that climate change has happened. We don't even have bushes exactly. anymore to go yes, to. Yes, there's no so, way you're going now. <laughs> so the question, the, okay, I, I don't know, people could just go to the bush if that's what they want to do. Mm. But my point is, ask yourself still, what are you doing about this leader who will come in, you know? How are you holding them accountable before you... Because now what are we going to do? Stop Museveni from running? Our constitution has already been raped, defiled, shattered. It has no power. Recently mm. I saw that Nobat Mao is having a conversation of MPs choosing mm. who the president Electoral is. Electoral reforms, yes. Electoral reforms. Mm. And ask yourself, if you really want to talk about reforms, are those the most painstaking issues in the electoral system in this country? So when you see a fellow tra police officer, traffic officer, mm. saying that, oh, when a soldier says do A, B, C, D, I must do it, yes. even though it's not the right thing to mm, do, mm. then you, you get scared. You tell yourself, then me, who has no gun, who is struggling to get a meal a day, who is unemployed, who has no say in this country, mm. I have no father, no mother, no sister in a political power. How powerless am I? You are it? powerless. Exactly. Mm. So in this country, in so many ways, subtle ways and strong ways, you're reminded that power doesn't belong with you, mm. despite what the constitution says through creating fear. Mm. But also, I feel like there is an apathy in Ugandans to know what their history is, to mm. just read or get some exposure in line with like civic and political education, mm. you get? But, oh, I um, think they know, but because of the reality on ground, they, they fear, because I'm going to give you an example. What they called a protest in 2020, yeah. I did not call it a protest. You called but it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think it was a protest, really. But over 50 Ugandans were murdered on yes. that day in cold blood. People yes, in the their November hotels. Massacres. Yes, so I think it stems from a reality that you will go. You, you remember how you guys were treated yeah. when you went for protest. Yeah. So isn't this valid to an extent for us to just heave and hide and maybe say, no, I, I want I want to believe so. Mm. I want to believe so, but mm. that's not the case. You understand? It's mm. another thing to meet a fearful, knowledgeable person, mm -hmm. but it's another thing to meet an ignorant, fearful person. Those mm. are two different things. Now, there are people we have in this country that don't even know that they have certain rights, mm. you know, that the state owes them certain duties. Mm. For example, when we were in prison mm. and I was trying to talk to some inmates and I was telling them, do you guys know that you have certain rights? For example, the wardens are not supposed to beat you. If you're locked up in cell, it shouldn't exceed three days. Mm. I'm like, no, but I'm a prisoner. Like, what do you expect when you come to mm. prison? Do you expect to eat well? You don't have any rights. Exactly. Mm. So there are a bunch of people who do not even know what their rights are. Mm. And when an oppressive state mm. that irrespective of which, because human beings are inherently selfish. Mm. If I get into a position of power, even though I've been on this street, protesting time and time again, going to Luzira, and I'm faced with a situation which serves me, there's a, a possibility mm. that I'm going to think to take it up for myself. And I'm going to give Nobat Mao as the biggest example here. Nobat Mao, when he was on the streets of the opposition, was always professing, this government is the worst. Do life. not tell me that. The struggle is, then he got in, and I am so sad to say I was part of the people who were like, get into the system and change it. I think he had a point. Let's wait for the miracle he's going to do. And here we are. <laughs> Young people are being arrested for protesting peacefully and 
He's saying nothing. You get mm. here we are. He's a minister, justice, uh, uh, minister of justice, mm. and we still have political prisoners, and he has not even had a conversation about it. So the question becomes. Even the people we think are good people, pick mm. the most ideal person you could think is the next president of this country. Edgar, Carole. exactly, yeah. Edgar, yeah. who has been here, you know, <laughs> sending bullets, sending bullets everywhere. Yeah. If he got into a power position and mm. he, for some reason, realized that that power is not checked, mm. he's going to get away with everything yes. he yeah. does. And yeah. that's the question. That's why I feel like our problem is not, oh my God, we don't have an opposition that mm. is ready to take up power. Mm. Or, no, no, no. We don't have a people that is ready for a serious government. Mm. And that is the actual dilemma. And that's why you hear a president telling you that I am not a servant of anybody. <laughs> and I'm like, you are the president. You sir. actually are. You are a servant yes. of everybody. <laughs> right, let, let we also have the opposition. We are putting Mr. Museveni on sport and government. But we have an alternative government. How ready is the alternative government to take power? Because from time immemorial, uh, one would say that people have garnered around an idea, and this idea they've worked to achieve it. So as the opposition, many people have garnered around them for a long time, and many people believe that the opposition is too much on ground. But, but how, how credible is this opposition that we are garnering behind, madam? Mm -hmm. The opposition. Mm. Well, if it is a bus that the NRM is, mm. then the opposition is, uh, I'd say, wheelbarrows <laughs> running behind the bus. <laughs> yeah, wheel, because not even a bicycle. A bicycle can be faster and it doesn't get stuck in traffic. Mm. So it could actually bypass the bus. So we have mm. a group of wheelbarrows being pushed behind, mm. chasing this bus. Mm. And that cannot take us far because it yeah. has not taken us far. Anywhere. We've already seen that. Mm. It has not taken us anywhere. Uh, all it has done is to, again, make the safe corridor more comfortable. Yeah. Mm. That uh, you sit back and say, oh, we have, we have FDC. They're doing something. Last time they did an activity. Uh, they were marching to I don't know where. Mm. You saw Noop. They were, they were marching, you know. So, so at a point where Ugandans would rise up and, and say enough is enough, we, we've had enough of injustice, we, we get Ugandans falling back and, and trusting these uh, political players. Mm. But they're not helping. Mm. Yeah, they're not helping. Uh, there are people who have said it is also a creation of the system. And it is true. Mm. Yeah, it is, it is just to make the system run. Legitimize. Yeah, yeah. The we have the region. You know, we've had people sacrifice in the best ways they can mm. to serve the region because it is one of those vulnerable. It is like a child mm. when you're trying to raise a child. Well, and some people were stealing, stealing from the vulnerable. And we get a of parliament <laughs> stealing, stealing from, from a the baby. Child. You know, <laughs> it, it's it's unforgivable. Mm. The Christians will come and say everything is forgiven, but not mm. everything is forgivable even in the Bible. Mm. Jesus Himself, I think it is in Matthew, He says mm. that. Every sin can be forgiven, mm. but one who blasphemes the, yeah, the Holy Spirit. Mm. True. So there is also a sin in the Bible that cannot be forgiven. The mm. speaker going to steal from Karamoja, from the a vulnerable person. region. Mm. Vulnerable. We all know that. Even we are young people. We know that. Mm. So the speaker who is old enough to be our mother knows that. That this is a region that we've... We've sort of set aside. Mm. With this region, we are sensitive with it. Affirmative Everything, action. Affirmative action. Anything that's Karamoja, we have to be sensitive. And mm. then you go and steal from that region. Okay. And you question people who strip naked on the streets. You know? That was standard. So where we are at is uh, any action that you do that does not look like, that is not a look-alike of the system. If you do not go through the channels. These are things that you're trying to fight. The civilians are trying to advocate for. The systems that you said, uh, the table, you gave an analogy of the table. The, the table is, is really crumbling <laughs> by the day. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that issue? Yeah, the, the issue of the first son. Mm. Um, the tweeting general. The tweeting general. I'm not on Twitter. I wouldn't know his tweets, mm. but um, his words, you know that they are shared eventually. Mm. He speaks from a point of privilege. 
yeah, he's been privileged so much. You know, when you've had uh, a father who owns a country, you might not know much. I mean, and it's ironic because if your father owns the country, you should know the nitty gritties of this country. The country. I would, mm. you know. If your father owns a company, for example, you should try mm. to know what is happening in this country mm. to, to a level of even understanding what the cleaners are doing. But uh, that is not what we've seen from Kinerugaba. Yeah. And um, I wouldn't say I expect much from him. Uh, wow. Yeah, I wouldn't say I expect <laughs> much. <laughs> I've, I've seen people react on, the, on him coming up and saying that he's not running for 2026. And mm. I was wondering, did you people think he was running? Mm. You know? I'll keep using the reference of a narcissist. Mm. To a narcissist, even the child is, is, is a pawn in the game. Mm. Yeah. Even their wife is a pawn in the game. So for people, for Ugandans to think for one second that if Museveni is still interested in power, the son is going to run, mm. I think that... that he cannot power. trust his own seed with power? Mm -mm. To a narcissist, I'm telling you, anybody around him is a pawn. Mm. 